position to Tony Nicholas Popolewski is present for representative defendant Steve Mezzo and Mr. Mezzo appears to be present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. The court is in receipt of a consent judgment for custody, parenting time, and child support, which is wonderful. Uh, the court appreciates efforts of counsel and uh, applauds the parties for reaching their own agreement on these issues. Uh, Ms. Carabello, Mr. Bezzo, can you both raise your right hand to be sworn, please? I do. Thank you. Right, Mr. Russell, if you're going to begin with Ms. Carabello, just confirm with her understanding of this agreement and her belief that's the best interest of the minor child, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Minor Carabello, children, I should say. Yes. Ms. Carabello, we had mediation with Gerald Soborowski. You recall that? Yes, I do. That mediation, we reached an agreement that would be to have joint legal custody with Mr. Mezzo, which means you and he would cooperate and communicate on all the major life decisions of your two children, and that you would have primary physical custody for purposes of school enrollment where you live down in Monroe, Michigan. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And then if you agreed to continue your parenting time schedule where Mr. Mezzo would have uh, parenting time during the school year and alternate weekends from Friday 8 p.m. to Sundays at 8 p.m.? Yes. And then you guys would exchange uh, do week alternating weeks during the summertime with Mr. Mezzo getting the first full week of summer break once the break happens. Yes, that's correct. And then you guys also reached a child support amount that's set forth in the child support order, and that was based upon the Michigan Child Support Guidelines and the reported income of the parties, correct? Correct. And do you believe that these terms of custody and parenting time are in the best interest of your two children? Yes, I do. And you guys have also agreed to uh, communicate through the app Close app. Is that correct? Yes. And then finally, you've agreed to alternate the tax exemptions for the minor children in the manner set forth in the proposed judgment. Yes. And, uh, you, you and Mr. Mezzo actually have been kind of following this kind of agreement for the, basically since the uh, two of you separated years ago. Is that correct? For the most part, yes. Correct. And you feel that you can continue to, to maintain this arrangement? Yes. Nothing further, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Mr. Opluski, do you have any questions, first of all, for Ms. Carabello? No, Your Honor. Okay, a brief examination of Mr. Mezzo, please. Mr. Mezzo, um, you've had a chance to review the consent judgment that's been presented to this court. Is that correct? Yes. And we reached this after mediation? Yes. And you understand that you could have gone to trial on this, done better, worse, or the same, but nonetheless, you affixed your signature to this consent judgment? Yes, I did. Okay. And do you believe that the parenting time guidelines or parenting time of uh, Visions that are set forth in that judgment, are they currently in the best interest of your minor children? Yes. And you understand that um, these provisions can be modified, but only by showing of a change in circumstances or proper cause? Yes, I do. Okay. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Apolewski. Uh, Mr. Russell, do you have any questions, Mr. Mezzo? I do not. Right, well, the uh, court finds any agreement between the parents to be the best interest of the minor children. Uh, the court will accordingly uh, enter the, the order. Uh, the only question the court had is with respect to the order, the uniform child support order. There is no effective date. Uh, do we use an effective date of uh, June 1st? Yes, sure. May 1st? Fine, Your Honor. June 1st is fine. June 1st? Is that agreeable, Mr. Opelouski? Yes, Your Honor. Right. The court will insert that date and I'll put my initials next to it that effective June 1st. The payer, Mr. Mezzo, shall pay child support in the amount of $1,100 per month. Very well. The court would uh, like to thank again, once again, to Mr. Russell and Mr. Opelousky for helping facilitate ample resolution. The court would applaud you, Mom and Dad. Your children will thrive because you're on the same page. There will be challenges in the future, but please communicate effectively for their best interests. There's enough challenges in life. Make good for each other and particularly the children. Mom, it's always important for Father's Day. The, the kids, uh, the little things that mean a lot to those children. And make sure the kids get a Father's Day card for their dad. And uh, likewise, Mr. Mezzo, it's Mother's Day. Make sure that you get the children have cards for their mom. Those little things mean a lot to your children. They will do well in life. And life will be a lot better for you when your children are doing well. So again, the court applauds you for each of this agreement. 
Uh, the court will uh, accordingly adopt the agreement, enter the order, and now we'll conclude this hearing. Thank you again, Mr. Russell and uh, Mr. Opelowski. Yeah, everybody can zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The court for subsequent to parties have engaged in mediation with Ms. Patrick for the front of the court this morning. The president for the Zoom hearing is Attorney Maria Zagorski, representing the plaintiff Robert Schaefer. Mr. Schaefer is present with Ms. Gorski in her office. In addition, the defendant Sarah Carner is also present. Ms. Carner, are you still there? I think I just saw her blink off and I don't see her square anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, Attorney Amy Wiskoviak is present, representing the defendant uh, Sarah Carner. Sarah Carner was here, but we'll wait for her to log back in. All right, Ms. Carter, can you hear the court? Oh, I thought she said you see her. I mean, she's coming. Okay. Sorry. All right, Ms. Carter, can you hear the court? I can, yes. Okay. Uh, the court just called the case. The court uh, is of the understanding that the parties, uh, you and Mr. Schaefer, have reached agreement relative to the primary issue of school district. Is that correct, Ms. Korski, Ms. Wispoviak? It is, Your Honor. Yes. Wonderful. Who would like to place the agreement on the record? Judge, I'm happy to. It was my motion. Um, as Please. you know, I, I filed a motion to determine school district and to modify health care coverage. That is currently scheduled to be heard by you on Tuesday at 830. So we would ask that that be vacated because the parties have agreed as follows with respect to their minor daughter, Reese, who um, will be five years old this summer. They have agreed that she will attend Stateline Christian. I think it's Stateline Christian Academy, Stateline Christian School. Um, the parties will share the cost of that with my client paying two thirds and Ms. Carner paying one third. She will be starting kindergarten there this fall and she will stay at state line through the fifth grade. That's the party's agreement. And we understand, of course, that is always subject to your authority to determine her best interest should something catastrophic happen. But the party's intent is that she would attend through fifth grade. The parties have also agreed that they, they will each pay their own child care if they need it. Extracurricular activities will be shared with that same uh, ratio of 60, 40, 60 to my client, 40 to Ms. Carner. Excuse me, it's not the same ratio because they're paying the tuition one third, two thirds, but they'll share extracurricular 60, 40 if both parties agree to the child's participation. If there is no agreement, then the party who wants the child to participate shall pay 100%. There would be no requirement that the other parent facilitate attendance unless it were a school sport, in which case the parties would ensure the child's attendance. Um, they intend to exchange the child to and from school, except on Fridays, because mom has Fridays off. So my client on his Fridays would go and retrieve the child from Ms. Carner at 530. So their current parenting time schedule will remain in effect. But right now they exchange at 530. That would continue only on the Fridays. Otherwise, they'll exchange to and from school. Um, with respect to uh, the school attendance, the parties have agreed that they and their daughter will go to the school together to give her her first tour and to get her registered. And regarding the issue of health care, we are going to modify the child support order so that my client continues to pay $258 a month in child support. That's his base support requirement. And he will pay that directly. Um, there, he's going to continue to provide the insurance for the minor child and pay 100% of all medical costs he can do that through his employer. He has outstanding benefits. So he will be responsible for everything. He will provide Ms. Carner with a benefits card, and then she will have to give him a receipt for any service within 30 days of the child receiving that service so that he can give it back to his employer and it can be processed through his health care benefits. And that is the party's agreement. Thank you, Ms. Zagorski. Ms. Wiskowiak, did Ms. Zagorski accurately state your client's agreement? She did. Um, I We did discuss the fact, and of course, this is the law anyway, that at any point, my client could opt back into front of the court if there was a reason to do so, um, although we don't anticipate that there be a reason to do so. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, to Mr. Schaefer, Ms. Carter, can you both please raise your right hand to be sworn, please? Do you both, of course, you want to give with Mr. Schaefer, please? Yes. Um, Rob, would you please state your name for the record? Robert James Schaefer. You've participated now in two mediations regarding the issues before the court, correct? That is correct. And we reached agreement this morning, and I correctly stated that agreement on the record? Correct. And um, do you believe that the plan that we've set forth is in your daughter's best interests? I do. You are committed to continuing to facilitate and encourage a strong relationship between Reese and her mother, correct? I do. And as to the expense of medical care costs and child care, you understand what we've agreed to? I do. You understand that you are going to be solely responsible for any healthcare expense that this child encounters. I do. And um, 
You understand that you're going to provide a benefits card to Sarah and you two will have to communicate when there is a medical issue regarding Reese so that you can coordinate her care. I do. Okay. And you're asking the court to adopt this agreement? I am. Thank you. I have nothing further. Thank you, Ms. Gorski. Ms. Wiskoviak, do you have any questions of Mr. Schaefer? No, I don't. Okay. Questions for Ms. Carner, please. Would you state your name, please? Sarah Carner. And Sarah, um, you heard the agreement that Ms. Zagorski read on the record, correct? Uh, yes. Did you understand that record? Yes. Th that, excuse me, that agreement. Um, is it fair to say that that agreement came about as a result of uh, two days of mediation and negotiation? Um, yes. And it also came about after the two of you went and visited a number of different schools and um, considered a bunch of options for your, your daughter, correct? Yes, several. And after doing all of that investigation and doing all of that negotiation based upon the options, do you believe that this is the, the option that is in the best interest of your daughter? Um, yes. And as to the, rema the, the remainder of the agreement, um, is there anything that you don't understand about that agreement? Um, the only thing I had a question on is when the child support will be switched over and when, like when that takes effect other than that, which doesn't matter to me. I just wanted to make sure that we had a idea could, of when. That's a good question. We did not have a date that we, that we said, um, usually it would be when the order goes through, but we did not, um, the court were proposed, um, the first of the month, June 1st, we would need either need opt out paperwork filled out by the parties or Mr. Gorsi, we're going to need a new USO that opts them out of the front of the court. I can do a, a new UCSO with the front of the court opt out. Um, does Ms. Kerner have any preference regarding how those payments are made? Does she want to, for example, a check? Does she want to provide the bank information so that he can do direct deposit? Um, we can do either Venmo or check. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Uh, he's suggesting Venmo. If that works. That's fine. By, okay. Payment via Venmo. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to do it Venmo starting June 1st. Yes. Okay. Good question. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, do you have it, that resolved all the questions that you have? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, do you understand that the um, visitation schedule has been modified slightly when school starts next year as to pick up and drop off? Correct? Yes. And you also understand fully how the extracurriculars work and that you have to get a verbal agreement or excuse me, you have to get an agreement beforehand. Um, only if I want his participation. Correct. Yes. All right. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Wiskoviak. Ms. Gorski, do you have any questions of Ms. Carner? Just a couple, Judge. Um, so, Ms. Carner, you understand that it is critical that you provide any receipt for services healthcare services that you obtain for Reese to yes. Mr. Schaefer within 30 days. I understand. Okay. And um, you understand that because you two still have joint legal custody, it, it's not a function of you being able to just enroll her in whatever you want. You two still need to discuss those things as parents. Yes. Okay. It's, it would only be that if he didn't agree to participate in that extracurricular that you could do it at your own expense. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Skorsky. And, uh... You'll prepare the order, Ms. Gorski? Yes, I'm sorry. One more question, Ms. Carner. You understand that healthcare services have to be in network, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Judge, I will prepare the order and the uniform child support order. Thank you. Uh, well, the court would like to thank uh, Ms. Patrick for her fine assistance in helping facilitate an amicable resolution of this important issue. Uh, the court would also, of course, acknowledge and, and thank uh, Ms. Zagorski, Mr. Wiskowiak, uh, Mr. Schaefer, Ms. Carner, your uh, you're very well served by two very capable family law practitioners. Without question, the best resolution of this an important issue is one which you both uh, participate and agree upon, uh, as opposed to uh, the court as a stranger making these decisions for your daughter. So I applaud you for both being open-minded and reaching your own agreement, uh, and at least getting us through to, to the fifth grade for, for Reese. Uh, the court finds this agreement to be in the best interest of the minor child. The court, they will accordingly adopt and enter the order upon presentment, and with this agreement, the court will vacate the hearing scheduled for Tuesday, May 28th at 8.30 a.m. Thank you, Ms. Patrick, Ms. Gorski, Mr. Wiskowiak. Have a good rest of the day. We're going to zoom out. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Ms. Patrick. One question, Ms. Grimm. Uh, you did not complete the one paragraph that provided for a name change. Do you want your former name restored or are you going to keep the name Grimm? Um, I would like to get my maiden name back. 
which is Oleski? Correct. All right. That You did not uh, note that in the judgment, but I will add that, that uh, your uh, defendants, I'm sorry, yeah, you're actually the plaintiff. Your name was uh, restored to Oleski. When you get a copy of judgment, you need to take a copy to the Secretary of State and Social Security, copy of judgment to facilitate that name change, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. All right, Mr. and Mr. Grimm, can you both please raise your right hand to be sworn, please? Thank you. Is it true, Ms. Grimm, that you filed a complaint for divorce with this court on about February 9th, 2024? Yes, sir. Is it further true that under the date you filed the complaint that you resided in the county of Monroe for at least 10 days in the state of Michigan at least six months? Yes, sir. Is it further true that you married Charles Grimm on October 3rd, 2020, and you separated in October of 2023? Correct. Is it true there's been a breakdown of your marriage relationship to the extent that the obviously match money have been destroyed? There's no reasonable likelihood that your marriage can be preserved. Correct. Were there any children born or adopted during your marriage who are still minors? No, sir. Are you currently pregnant? No, sir. And you signed your name to this proposed judgment approving the terms and conditions contained therein. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Mr. Grimm, can you please state your name and uh, address for the record, please? Charles Grimm. Thank you. Mr. Grimm, did you hear the testimony this afternoon of your wife, Heather? Yes. Was her testimony true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Did you also sign your name to this proposed judgment? Yes. Okay, I'm going to walk through the terms of this with both of you. You've agreed that spousal support is not awarded. That's forever barred. You've already divided your personal property, so each will keep the personal property currently in your respective possession, free and clear of any claim on the part of the other. There are no joint debts. So each pay debts in their own name. Each keep their own automobiles, pay debt they're on. There's no real estate to be divided. There are no pensions or IRAs to be divided. Finally, the plaintiff Heather's name uh, shall be changed to Oleski. Um, Ms. Heather, do you have any questions for the court? No, sir. All right, Mr. Charles, do you have any questions for the court? No, sir. All right, the court appreciates your cooperation in uh, submitting this completed judgment to the court. So we can uh, uh, proceed uh, without a lot of delays. In any event, based upon the testimony that's been presented this afternoon, as well as complaint filed this matter, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established. The court further finds that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the obviously mad point has been destroyed and there appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. Accordingly, it is ordered by this court that the marriage between the parties be and is thereby uh, uh, dissolved and judgment letter granting a divorce with bonds of matrimony. Judgment has been signed. A copy mailed out to both of you. I'll conclude this proceeding. You can both zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good luck. The court would note you, that this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is a, appears to be plaintiff Matthew Pagan, as well as his attorney, Millicent Milhado. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Melissa Malhado appearing on behalf of Matthew Pagan for the record. Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Pagan. Um, good for afternoon, the record, Your Honor. Defendant mother has a court appointed guardian appointed by the Wayne County Probate Court by the name of uh, Sharon Kinnearum, who resides in the state of Texas. She was mailed notice of this pretrial conference, which got for 1 30. She has not appeared. Her contact with court is now 2 p.m. Ms. Malhado, have you had any contact with Ms. Uh, Kinnearum this afternoon? Not today, Your Honor. I have not. I did prior to the hearing, and she was made aware of the, the date and time of the hearing during that conversation about a week ago. And it's the court's understanding that um, defendant mother, Kimberly Tackett, is currently hospitalized in a medical facility up in Wayne County. Is that correct, Ms. Spahato? Uh I believe she's. it's a, a hospital, St. John's in Grand Rapids, and that was true to my knowledge, about a couple of weeks ago. As of today, I do not know the status. Oh, well, I'm informed that Ms. Kinnerma is now appearing. Okay. It's about, I don't know if Texas has a different uh, time zone, but... Uh, okay, well, we'll put, uh, we're going to put you back in the breakout room, Ms. Mahato, so you can uh, talk with... Uh, with Ms. Kinnearm and uh, Mr. Pagan and Mr. Walker. Uh, hopefully this recommendation of Mr. Walker that data be uh, awarded to legal physical custody, uh, at any time be pursuant to the Wayne County NA case, and that this uh, Monroe County DS case transfer from Lake County be consolidated into this DC case. Um, so we're gonna put your breakout room and hopefully uh, 
So you'll have no objection to this proposed relief. Uh, the guardian of uh, the defendant mother, Shannon Kinnearum, has appeared. Uh, Mr. Walker, your recommendation, uh, can you maybe reference Ms. Kinnearum? Maybe, uh, uh, maybe underneath uh, Ms. Tackett's name on the entitlement to saying that uh, guardian Shannon Kinnearum appeared? I can do that, Your Honor. I will submit a updated recommendation. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Kinnearum. Okay. I don't know if there's a different time zone in Texas. You uh, never said for 1.30. Uh, you zoomed in just as we're ready to conclude. Yeah, I apologize for that. Uh, there is a time difference, and I've, we're having power issues down here in the state. Okay. I know you've got a lot of storms. Your relationship with Kimberly Tackett, are you sisters? Uh, yeah, we're direct sisters. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, the court is aware that you've been appointed by the Lake County you're appointed to guardian of your sister by, is it Lake County or Wayne County? Was it Wayne, Wayne County. County? Wayne yeah. County, Judge. Okay. I met uh, also present uh, this afternoon as the plaintiff father, Matthew Pagan, and his attorney, uh, Millicent Melhado. We have two nine-year-old girls here. The recommendation of uh, Mr. Walker is that the plaintiff father shall solely go physical custody of the minor children until further of the court. This is temporary without prejudice. And that parenting time between uh, mother and the children shall continue pursuant to the Wayne County case, which is 2023. DS is consolidated into this DC case. Uh, for the record, the Lake County transferred its support action to this county of Monroe since the children now reside in Monroe County. And the new Monroe County file, which contains all the pleadings from the Lake County support case, uh, is 2024. So that case will be consolidated into this DC case. And we have a parenting time order in place so that. Mr. Pagan can authorize medical treatment on behalf of the children if necessary, place them in school and so forth. He needs that legal authority to do those important tasks. Ms. Mahato, is your client agreeable with this recommendation? And does that address the issue? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we are agreeable with that recommendation uh, regarding custody. Uh, just for the record, Your Honor, um, we would uh, respectfully object to the issue of jurisdiction. Um, well, hold, hold on. With... Yeah, I'm sorry, you're objecting to this court having jurisdiction? If so, would this case send back to Wayne County? Don't the children live here? Yes, yes, the children live here, Your Honor. If if I may, if I may, uh, there in regard to the pending Wayne County case, uh, there is a court of appeals case that indicates that when there is a pending child protective proceeding case, that the that that court uh, has jurisdiction to uh, issue orders regarding custody, but that there needs to be a separate uh, DC case, which is what prompted us in filing uh, the complaint in this case, Your Honor. So I wouldn't be requesting the court to dismiss this case, just simply staying this case to allow Wayne County to issue orders in custody um, under this case uh, number. Um, and for and the reason for that is because um, Ms. Tackett has a court appointed attorney to assist her regarding custody in that case, whereas in this case, she does not have that right uh, to a, an attorney. Um, and as you can see, she probably would not be participating. Did you serve that attorney with uh, your pleadings? I did serve the attorney with the pleadings. Um, because of his agree appointment uh, agreement with Wayne County, he is only able to uh, practice and participate in the case in Wayne County, but he is aware of these proceedings. Right, the, uh, uh, I don't see anything in this court file that any other, other, other parties were served. Um, this court cannot sit on this case. We have time performance guidelines, as you're well, well aware, Ms. Mahalo, this court needs to enter a custody order. Uh, so okay. you can take it up with Wayne County. Um, and again, if there's an issue about parenting time, I guess you can have... You can petition the Wayne County Probate Court, the Wayne County Circuit Court to address that. Uh, no, it's actually Wayne County Probate. Is that correct? The Probate Court is deals with the, the legal guardianship for, for Ms. Tackett, yes. Um, I'm, I'm talking just solely regarding the custody of the children. Okay. The court was only aware that there's a DS case. Uh, I'm sorry, there's a DS case and an NA case in Wayne County, two cases. Your Honor, there's just an NA case. Okay. Um, and there is a uh, upcoming review hearing on July 16th. Um, so that is the potential date that I would uh, request a, an, a custody hearing and request the court to enter a final custody order. Um, so this case okay. would not be stayed for very long if the court should do so. Well, this is a, uh, this recommendation, Mr. Walker indicates, is, is on a temporary basis without prejudice. If, in fact, uh, Ms. Tackett's attorney has some objection to this, I mean, obviously, this Mr. Pagan needs to be in, in a position to authorize medical treatment. If the child needs to be injured over the weekend and is taking the mercy room, he needs to have an order of uh, 
uh, custody. So this court's going to enter the order recommended by Mr. Walker be mailed a copy. You can take it over to Wayne County if, in fact, they don't like this, or if the Miss um, Tackett's attorney has it as an issue, uh, they can take it up with Wayne County. And if you want to come back here and make this final after July 16th, you can renotice it, and we can make this final. But until further, the court this this court uh, has authority over these children who reside in Monroe County with the plaintiff father, and this court's going to award him solely for this custody at this time on a temporary basis without prejudice. Thank you, Ms. Do you have any questions, concerns? No, no, no concerns, um, Your Honor, uh, other than what has been previously communicated to me by, by Kimberly is that she's had no issue with um, custody over to Matt Pagan that she's uh, uh, un unable to, to care for the children. Okay. And again, this order that the court's going to adopt provides a parenting time continues pursuant to that Wayne County order. So I don't know what those particulars are, but if in fact there's an issue um, that Mr. Pegg is not compliant with that parenting time order, then uh, the court, then the parties can address that. All right. Anything further than uh, Ms. Mojado this afternoon? Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. The, the, uh, Mr. Pagan is here in the court. Uh, I don't think we need any testimony from Mr. Pagan. The court will assume that obviously he's agreed. Ms. Pagan, let me ask you, how long have the two girls been in your physical possession? Well, they have been with me since March 23rd of last year. So over a year? Yes, sir. And you uh, can provide for their, and it is an unusual case, no question, with so many courts being involved, and uh, perhaps you can assist in sorting it out. All right, that will conclude, sir. We're going to zoom out and have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Sir. Welcome. For the record, this matter is before the court for pretrial conference, subsequent to mediation. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Uh, present is Attorney John Danielski, representing the plaintiff, Zachary James. Mr. James is present. In addition, uh, Attorney uh, Jennifer Winstead is present, representing the defendant, Brianna Burge. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, I'm going to put the two parties in the break room so the court can talk to us specifically with counsel, please. All right, uh, the parties have been put in a breakout room. Uh, just present now is Mr. Danielski and Ms. Winstead. Um, we have a one and a half year marriage. And Mr. Danielski, I've known you for the 10 years I've been on this bench. And I've told you you've been less than professional with Ms. LaPrat for the front of the court. This court will not tolerate that. I don't know what your problem is today, Mr. Danielski, if you're having a bad day, but the, the court will not tolerate attorneys acting in less than a professional fashion. I'd, I'd like to know what Stephanie has to say. I don't even, I, I didn't even know what's going on. I hardly said much of anything today. Um, Just uh, take note of that, Mr. Danielski. I'd, I'd love right, to talk so to Stephanie to find out what's going on. Okay. Well, what, what, maybe tell the court what's going on. Do we have a resolution? We've agreed to have Margaret Tobin mediate on June 3rd. And then I was told to log out and log on with your honor. Okay, now I'm sorry, who's going to mediate? Margaret Tobin. I'd love Margaret to hear what Tobin? Ms. LeBron has to say. I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded, your honor. Well, I, maybe I you don't talk know to her where afterwards. this is coming from. I, don't, I have no idea where this is coming from. Okay. Uh, what's uh, not familiar with Margaret Tobin? Is that T O B E N? Yes. Okay, so you've got a private mediator then? Yes. Yes. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Maybe I offended Miss Laprod by by saying um, we're going to go to a private mediator. I I don't know, Mr. Janowski. You can uh, maybe f uh, talk to her afterwards. So the mediation is June third. At what time? At at one thirty. Thirty. Okay. All right. I, well, I, I, uh, Your Honor, I well, feel like I have to. If you give me one second, all we did we we talked for a little bit with my client and Je Jennifer talked with her client. We told Miss Laprade we couldn't settle it. Me and Miss Laprade had a breakout room. We talked a little bit. We said this is a uh, parties are kind of you know you know stuck in their positions. We both had cases with Miss Tobin recently who settled some tough cases, and uh, we agreed to go to see Miss Tobin. Then I told Miss Le came back in with Miss Laprade. I said, well, we're going to go see Miss Tobin. Maybe that maybe I offended Miss. LaProd by saying we were going to go see Ms. Tobin. I didn't say meanly. I didn't raise my, I haven't raised my, I, see. Okay. And I, I'm sorry, Mr. Daniski, I don't know. I wasn't present. Uh, Ms. LaProd has been rough for a while, so I don't think she'd be offended by the fact that you want to go to a private mediator. 
I mean, obviously, very times people go from the front of the court to Mr. Godfrey, as you know. Um, so I'll reach out to Miss the Prod and, and ask her um, what's going on. I'd, I'd love to know, Your Honor. Okay. All right. We'll have parties come back in and run the record. Once again, for the record, this matter is before the court for a pretrial conference. The same is being conducted via Zoom. Uh, present are uh, the parties as well as our respective counsel. Uh, the court had a brief conference with counsel. The court is informed that the parties were unable to reach their own agreement this afternoon, and they've scheduled a mediation, private mediator with the mediation with attorney Margaret Tobin on June 3rd at 1.30. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So the, uh, what the court would suggest is why we uh, schedule a continued pretrial conference after that uh, June 3rd uh, mediation. So whether it's 3 30, 4 o'clock, just to zoom in after you, uh, the parties are done. Hopefully, we've got an agreement. If not, so we can, if necessary, schedule a trial date. Um, has discovery been completed, Mr. Danielski and Ms. Winstead? Um, for the most part, Your Honor, I, I, I mean, there could be a couple of things, but nothing that would prevent us from settling the case on the third. Okay. Um, and the, the only issue is, is a marital home and inherited property up north. Is that correct? And a couple of vehicles and a boat, Your Honor. Okay. The short-term marriage, uh, for the most part, this course, many people should be back in the pretty much the same position they were at the time of the marriage, would be in such a short term, unless some one party made significant contributions toward improving the real estate. Don't know the facts about that, but for whatever it's worth. Um, all right. Anything further this afternoon, Mr. Danielski or Ms. Winstead? Otherwise, the court will send out notice of continued pretrial conference subsequent to the June 3rd continued mediation, 1.30. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, that will conclude this matter. Um, everyone can zoom out and have a good rest of the day. We'll send out notice. Thank you. That is before the court for a continued pretrial conference, the same as being conducted via Zoom. President is Attorney John Danielski, representing the plaintiff Zachary James. Mr. James is present. In addition, Attorney Jennifer Winstead is present, representing defendant Brianna Burge. Ms. Burge, can you hear the court? Yes, Your Honor. All right, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Danielski, Ms. Winstead. Um, the parties were scheduled to mediate with attorney Margaret Tobin earlier today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Were the parties uh, successful in reaching their own agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Wonderful. Who would like to place that agreement on the record? Um, I can do it, Your Honor. Uh, subject to if I make any mistakes, um, the, the uh, we just recorded it. The recording with Margaret would control. I don't think I will make a mistake, but just in case. All right, please, Mr. Danielski. Uh, the agreement is uh, no spousal support that's to either party. It's forever barred. There's a home. It's going to be sold forthwith. Uh, they're going to equally share the cost of the mortgage. In the meantime, um, the uh, cost of sale, they shall equally share, and, and they shall, um, the mother or, or the, the wife shall get, uh, when it's sold, the first 6000 Um uh, We believe there's plenty of equity in it, the first 6,000, and then um, the parties will uh, split the balance equally after cost of sale, mortgage payment, and all that. So the net proceeds will be split, but the uh, wife would take the first 6,000 off the top. The appliances and the fixtures are gonna stay with the home um, so they can get a good sale price. Um, there's a Harrison property um, that my client and his mother uh, own, um, and uh, that, uh, he, whatever he interest he has in that uh, goes to him. Um, there's a 2016 uh, GMC that's going to go to the wife. She's going to pay the debt and hold the father harmless. They're going to exchange that within seven days. My client's driving it. The 2020 GMC is going to go to the husband. Uh, the wife is going to exchange that with him within seven days, and he's going to pay all debt and hold harmless. The wife did get an accident over the weekend, minor accident. He's going to take care of that. Uh, you know, whether there's a deductible or or take it to a shop and not make a claim. It sounds like they may or may not make a claim. He may or may not make a claim on it. Depends on the damage. Um, so he gets the 2020. Uh, there's a, uh, a boat um, that goes to the husband. He holds the wife harmless. Uh, wife has a own business that's going to her. They're going to each keep their own financial accounts. Um, they're going to pay their own debts and attorney fees. The wife is going to get everything remaining in the home except the appliances and the fixtures that are gonna, that I previously mentioned. There's a tax refund. They filed taxes recently. They're going to split that 50-50 after paying off the uh, tax preparer. There's a five. And the last thing is there's a joint bank account. They're going to keep that open 
uh, to uh, pay the mortgage uh, while the home is uh, being sold. Money's going to that account, and then uh, and then uh, the wife can have the remainder after the uh, home is sold. Thank you, Mr. Janowski. Have the parties agreed upon a realtor to list the home? I believe we have Margaret Tobin as the arbitrator. If they can't agree on that, Your Honor, uh, but uh, they'll talk. And I, I don't know. I don't know. That didn't come up, Your Honor. But I did. Uh, I think Margaret Tobin would would pick it if the parties can't agree. All right. Um, all right. Thank you, Mr. Danielski. Mr. Winstead, did Mr. Danielski accurately state your client's agreement? Yes. Okay. Um, was there any discussion about the time frame for the parties to divide the personal property from the home, other than the appliances and pictures? Mom's getting everything. Better. She's getting everything in the house. So, okay. hey, there's, <laughs> so it's all hers, Your Honor. So sooner the better. That's all the court's suggesting. Our parties hopefully can coordinate that. Uh, very well, Mr. James, Ms. Burge, can you both please raise your right hand to be sworn? Mr. Danielski, uh, we can begin with Mr. James since he's a plaintiff, please. Uh, Zach, did you live in the uh, state of Michigan for 180 days consecutively before the case was filed? Yes. Did you live in uh, Monroe County, County 10 days consecutively uh, before the case was filed? Yes. Were the allegations and the complaint true at the time it was filed? Yes. Were they still true today? Yes. Is there any chance of reconciliation between you and Ms. Burge? No. Um, and uh, do you believe that the agreement that we placed on the record with Ms. Tobin in the court today is fair and equitable? Yes. And that you and Ms. Burge do not have minor children? You, correct, yes. All right, no other questions for uh, Mr. James. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Danielski. Ms. Winstead, do you have any questions, first of all, for Mr. James? No, sir. Okay, uh, questions for Ms. Burge, please. Uh, Ms. Burge, can you please state your full name for the record? Brianna Marie J. Burge. And did you hear the terms of the settlement that were placed on the record today? Yes. Do you agree to be bound by those terms? Yes. And you understand that by agreeing to those terms that you are foregoing your right to a trial where you could have done better, worse, or gotten the same. Do you understand yes. that? Yes. Um, you understand that spousal support is forever barred and neither you yourself nor your husband can come back later and request spousal support from the court. Do you understand that? Yes. And um, are you satisfied with the services I've provided you? Yes. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Ms. Burge, are you currently pregnant? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Danielski, do you have any questions for Ms. Burge? No, Your Honor. You'll prepare the judgment to Mr. Danielski? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Brother, well, I'd like to thank and acknowledge uh, Ms. Uh, Tobin for her assistance, as well as, of course, attorneys Dan Yelsky and Winstead for helping to facilitate the ample resolution. The court applaud you, Mr. James, Ms. Bird, for reaching your own agreement. Without question, that's the best resolution of a matter of this nature. Keep in mind, you'll not be divorced until the court signs written judgment. Hopefully, that will be within the next couple of weeks. Uh, based on the testimony that's been presented this morning, as well as the complaint filed in this case, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established. The court further finds that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the object of matrimony has been destroyed and there appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. Accordingly, upon receiving the consent judgment, the court will sign that judgment, and at that time, the court will order that the marriage between the parties be dissolved and judgment shall enter granting a divorce from the bonds of matrimony. Good luck to both of you. Thank you again, Ms. Winstead, Mr. Janowski. Uh, Everyone can zoom out and have a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Welcome. 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 For the record, this marriage before the court for a pretrial conference, the same as being conducted via Zoom. The president is attorney Elizabeth Cabrera, representing the plaintiff, Edward Miller. And, uh, sir, you're Edward Miller, is that correct? Yes. Okay, there's a woman seated next to you. Are you Susan Miller? Yes. Okay, it's wonderful. Two of you can uh, be together. Ms. Cabrera, uh, <laughs> need you need to speak with the front of the court this afternoon? Uh, no, thank you, Your Honor. I think we have everything worked out. Ms. Miller, do you understand, uh, first of all, that Ms. Cabrera, even though she may be helping you finalize this, she's going to prepare a judgment of divorce. She represents your husband, Edward, so her loyalty is live with Edward. Do you understand that, Ms. Miller? Yes, I'm completely aware. Yep. Okay. Ms. Miller, do you receive public assistance? Um, I receive um, food stamps, and I receive medical right now, and I'm waiting on Social Security for a severe injury that it is that I've just went through. All right. The reason, of course, asking is there was a fee waiver, and Ms. Cabrera, obviously, since you're still representing Mr. Miller, the court will um, will waive the filing fee in this case. Neither party, both parties are on public assistance. Thank you. So perhaps you could reference that in the judgment to Ms. Cabrera. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Miller, listen carefully. The court can have Ms. Cabrera state what she understands to be your agreement. After she does so, I'm going to turn to each of you individually and ask you whether or not it's a correct statement of your agreement, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, Ms. Cabrera. 
Alrighty. So, um, no spousal support is being awarded, uh, and the parties are forever barred from being, uh, from coming back and asking the court for spousal support. Uh, there are no joint debts between the parties. Uh, there are no joint real property owned by the parties. Each party is going to take what personal property they have that they had coming into the marriage. Uh, each party is retaining their own insurance and retirement plans as well. Uh, any vehicles owned by the parties are going to be retained in their own name. Thank you, Ms. Cabrera. Um, uh, Susan Miller, did Ms. Cabrera actually state your agreement? Yes, she did, sir. All right. All right, Mr. Mr. Miller, can you both please raise your right hand to be sworn? Is it true that you reviewed a complaint for divorce at our office before it was filed with the court? Yes. Were the allegations contained in that complaint true? Yes. Are they still true today? Yes. Is it true that you have resided in the state of Michigan for at least 180 days and within Monroe County for at least 10 days, immediately preceding the filing of this complaint for divorce? Yes. Is it true that there has been a breakdown in the marriage relationship to the extent that the objects of matrimony have been destroyed and that there remains no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved? Yes. Is that still true today? Yes. Were there any children adopted, born, or conceived during the marriage? No. Is it true that you were separate? You have been separated since approximately October of 2023? Yeah. Is there any property that needs to be divided? No. Are there any debts that need to be provided? No. And you understand that no spousal support is being awarded? Yes. And you understand that spousal support will be forever barred? Yes. And do you understand and agree to the terms of this agreement? Yes. And no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Cabrera. Ms. Miller, can you please state your name and current mailing address for the record? Susan Thank Michelle. You. Ms. Miller, did you hear the testimony of your husband, Edward, this afternoon? Yes, I did. Was his testimony true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes, it is, sir. Um, were there any children born or adopted during your marriage who are still minors? No, there is not. Are you currently pregnant? No, I am not. Do you have any questions for the court? No, I definitely do not. Do you have any questions for Ms. Cabrera? No, I do not. I've already done spoken with her and we've already clarified everything, you know, and I understand what it is that we're here doing, what it is that we're doing today. And I'm in right. total agreement with it all. Thank you. Ms. Cabrera, do you have any questions of Ms. Miller? Uh, no, I do not, Your Honor. And Ms. Guerrero, you're going to prepare the judgment. Are you going to submit it to Ms. Miller for her approval and her consent, or are you going to submit it under the 70 rule? Uh, I'm going to submit it to uh, the defendant beforehand for her approval okay, and for, consent. All right. All right. So, uh, Ms. Miller, Ms. Uh, Cabrera is going to prepare a written judgment. She's going to mail that to you for your review and approval. And uh, you should probably get that in the next maybe 10 days or so. And uh, you need to approve that. If there's a question about it, call Ms. Cabrera. Uh, otherwise, sign it, get back to Ms. Cabrera. And uh, once. Uh, it's submitted to the court. The court will sign that judgment. And I'm sorry, are you going to, do you want a restoration of a former name, Ms. Miller? You're going to keep the name Miller. Um, I'm keeping my name as Miller. Okay. All right. And Ms. Gray can know the judgment. The court is waiving the filing fee. Both parties being in public assistance. Uh, anything further, Ms. Cabrera? Um, nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Um, the court would like to thank Ms. Cabrera for her assistance and helping facilitate ample resolution. This matter. It's wonderful, Mr. Ms. Miller. You can sit, be seated together in the same room. Oh, yeah. Look, we get along just fine. Be it's just, just that fine. our breakdown of marriage is, you know, we're we're on two different total planes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm 41, he's 62, you know? 63. 63. So, and okay. I want to, you know, so that's what it is. It's just we're, we can, we can be in the same room and still live in, even and reside in the same home. We just literally want two different things in life. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Very well. Based upon the testimony that's been presented this afternoon, as well as complaint filed this matter, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established. The court further finds that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the obvious match when been destroyed, and there appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. The court upon receiving the consent judgment, the court will sign that judgment, and at that time, the court will order that the marriage between the parties be dissolved, and judgment shall enter, granting a divorce for the bonds of matrimony. Uh, that will conclude this hearing. You can both zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Uh, thank you, thank Mr. Barrett.